We all know this image of this man, scrunched over, big furrow brow. I'm Joe Rischel, and I'm a curator at the Philadelphia Museum, and one of my happiest obligations is also to be in charge of the Rodin Museum. We're standing here in front of the world's most famous sculptured images. It's The Thinker by Auguste Rodin. Rodin, he had a tremendous influence on my work. My name is Mark de Suvero, and I am a sculptor. I have been working in wood and steel for the last 50 years. This, from Rodin's point of view, is every man. He's none of these things which public sculpture is often about when depicting heroes. The president, the czar, the cardinal, anything like that. This is universal mankind, stripped of any attribute. He's buck naked. What Rodin really was trying to do here is to create this every man who is heroically splendid. He was able to elevate to the level of sculpture of uh, people and scenes that weren't considered worthy. This is a working physique of someone who builds railroads or works in a steel factory or something. This is the beginning of a very romantic fantasy that every man is the worker. Look closely because it is a very unrealistic thing. If this guy stood up, he would be, what, 18 feet tall. The back, it is so anatomically not by the books, way beyond observed anatomy or any muscle you care to develop in the gym. Sure, there's that big back and there's the muscles of the legs that are so well done, but it isn't that that captures you. The way that the body is crouched in that kind of complete concentration is the real thrust of the piece of sculpture. Rodin says himself, what makes my thinker think is that he thinks not only with his brain, but with his knitted brow, his distended nostrils, and his compressed lips, with every muscle of his arms, back, and legs, and the clenched fist and the gripping toes. This is a total thinking machine. A real human effort to make a, a visual document for a thought. How are you going to take essentially a thought which is lighter than air and between people and you can't touch it? So taking the thinker, making him naked, making him furrowed, browed with a fist in his uh, chin as if he is thinking is the closest that one can come. Look at the uh, stone that the thinker is sitting on. The bronze stone is most definitely not a chair and is not something that he has come out of. It's just a place just to be. And it works because it is as opposite to a thought as, well, what is more opposite to thinking than a stone? He's really giving a very big effort to something very serious, which is the thought. What is that thought I leave to you? And that's the fun of looking at this. 